the allure of studying abroad. I have been in the same boat, so I can empathize with you. And is it really worth it? Now, that is the question which I cannot answer. I can just implore you to ask yourself, do you really want to study abroad? Now, what are the benefits and what will be the challenges or the costs associated with it? Now, when I was doing my undergraduation from IIT, those days, even these days maybe, they will have a specific template as in what you should do to get into Harvard's or the MIT's or the Stanford's. Now, those, those templates are not designed to structure your profile academically, but those structures, those templates are such a way designed so that you get admit to such institutes being a person from a developing nation. Now, what do I mean by these things? Now, the thing over here is I do not want to spell out that template because I don't want to propagate that template because I have been a kind of a victim of that because when I was in my undergraduate, in my final year, I was like heavily bought into that template and even I wanted to structure my profile in such a way that I will do this in two years, this in three years and the next five to six years I'll apply for maybe these colleges, I'll sit for GRE, GMAT, GIF, TOEFL and other exams which are needed and then maybe I'll get an admit with a scholarship. Now obviously things are not so simple and there is no template for anything. But yes, there are few things which work out for a lot of people and then they kind of sell it like a template. Now, the problem here is that not everybody can afford the education given at a Harvard or a Stanford or let's say for even European schools. Now, the thing over here is that let's say you have some kind of an arrangement, a kind of a financial arrangement sorted out. Now, you can take that course. Now, the thing is, it doesn't end there. You have to also repay back the loan if that financial assistance was a loan. And let's say you have made some kind of an arrangement for re-education. What will you do afterwards? Do you plan on to stay there or you want to come back to India? Now, if you want to just go to study and come back to India, you need to just compare the counterfactual. Now, what do I mean by this is, what if you studied in India and we're at a top program and the kind of education which you got is almost the same as you would have got in an Ivy League or a top European school. Now, then definitely it, it kinds of begs you to understand that whether your financial arrangement was even worth it at the first place. Now, you can say that I got an international exposure, but if you're coming back to India, then uh, do you really need that international exposure? Now, I'm not saying you do not need it. You have to ask yourself, do you need that international exposure for your career? Not everybody has a same kind of a career. Somebody has a different kind of aspiration with, or with, with their career. So for that person, maybe an international exposure is something which is very much needed. So this is one aspect to it. The other aspect is that when you go abroad and you want to sustain yourself while studying, a lot of people, I mean most of the people, do some kind of a part-time job, which is not heard of in India. Because truth be said, the living standards abroad is not very, very low as compared to an Indian student. If you are somebody studying in a USA or a Europe, then definitely you will have to incur a lot of costs which needs some kind of a financing in a kind of a recurring way which can only be supported by some kind of a part-time job unless you come from a very influential or affluent family. So this is one another aspect which is related to the earlier aspect as well. Then the next part comes the cultural shock. So when you go to a foreign land, you will encounter some kind of a challenges, right? So what if you have to cross like 10,000 kilometers or 20,000 kilometers across the sea and then face those situations and then definitely you will have to figure out how to navigate through those social milieu. Now definitely when your main focus is studying then this is like an unwanted thing in your career path. Now few people might enjoy this. They might be going to get that education because of these challenges. You never know. People are not the same, right? But 
this is something which is going on in my head or rather it went on in my head when I was thinking about this. So uh, it's like this that uh, there were multiple uh, questions in my head that do I really need this kind of an education which comes with a lot of strings attached. So uh, in, in that situation I decided that, that maybe uh, first of all I do not have that kind of a financial means to support myself. Now second is that do I really need this education and the third is can I get in? All these three things essentially points out that no, I mean you cannot think about these courses. Now definitely the last factor can I get in is kind of like a very crucial thing. If let's say out of these three factors the last factor can I get into these programs would have been a resounding guess. I would have some kind of thought about the first two points that maybe if I can support myself and uh, maybe if I can uh, get through that social milieu, get through those challenges, then this course is worth it. But then the next question comes that, uh, do I really need that kind of a life or I can get that kind of a life from other means as well? Now, these questions are not very simple as they sound. You have to think about these questions from your personal experience and your personal situations. So, the reason I am making this video is that a lot of people think that the research level in India is not up to the mark as the West. Now, you may be right on that. I am not debating on that. But the thing is, do you really want to be a phenomenal researcher now will will the education hinder you or will the education stop you from becoming a phenomenal researcher now you have lots of people in India who have went on to become very influential they did not leave uh, the Indian soil so what will you say about them now you may say that these are outliers these are not the norm but the thing over here is if you put your head on to something you will achieve that now, you do not really need an education to become a researcher. You do not need a PhD to be a researcher. If research is something which you are interested in, these days you can do anything from anywhere. And if training and education is your barrier, these days, again, every education has gone online. So, do you really need to go to uh, so far off and uh, learn something which you can learn from the comforts of your home? These are the other questions which you should think about whenever you are considering studying in Ivy League or for that matter any any uh, school or university outside of India that what are the costs, what are the challenges, what are the benefits and can I get into the top programs because truth be said if you get into the middle tier programs now those middle tier programs would definitely not be as great as maybe uh, an IAT or an IASC or an IAM for that matter. So think about these things uh, thoroughly and then only make a decision. And yes, these days you also have a lot of career counselors, a lot of foreign admission experts. So you can take their help if you need. But uh, honestly, they have some kind of a skin in the game. Uh, which means to say that uh, they want you to study abroad. They will definitely try to uh, picture uh, the foreign education system through a rose tinted lens. So uh, you need to take that with a bag full of salt. But having said this, if you do not have an information, if you do not have a proper uh, structured analysis done on this question that whether do you really need to go abroad to study, then uh, this decision would not be information based decision or rather a knowledge based decision and it will just be something like a herd mentality decision. So don't go by the herd. I mean, try to think about what, what could happen if you do not go abroad. Now, how to get into the top programs in India? Now, you may say that getting into the top programs in India is very difficult compared to getting into a middle tier program in US, Europe, Australia, Korea or Japan. So uh, definitely, if, if that is your concern that all the challenges put aside, you can get into abroad programs, but not India programs, then definitely uh, you are somebody who has to think about only the finances. And if you have also worked out the finances, then probably uh, that is a good choice for you. Then 
but the problem is that you also need to understand that you have to think in long term whether do you want to stay back at that country or uh, come back to india and do pursue your career so these are the questions which you need to think through and uh, yes this video is just a way to implore you to think through this and uh, don't just think about that the education abroad will be of higher standard than india no it's it's not always true uh, a lot of programs these days have become at par wherever you study across the globe so you have to think about the other aspects as well thank you